From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, firefighters near Red Lodge finally start to get a handle on the state's largest wildfire. Today, crews make major headway as they start building plans to build dozer lines around the Robertson Draw fire to keep those flames from reaching the resort town. Now, that fire has now grown to just over 24,000 acres. Tonight, fire crews focus their efforts on structure protection and flame containment. 162 fire personnel are now on scene fighting the blaze, which has been declared human caused. A suspect has been identified, but no charges have been filed. Most of the evacuations remain in place, except for those on the east side from Highway 212 to Matitsi Trail, which were lifted late last night. The closure also remains in place for the area south of Highway 212, east to the area along the Beartooth Front, and south to the Wyoming border. At last check, the fire is 0% contained. Well, Montana's Governor Greg Gianforte traveled to that fire today to hear directly from fire officials. Q2's Brennan Warren was there and has the details. Governor Greg Gianforte met officials at Belfry Elementary School to get a briefing on the Robertson Draw fire. Concern is uh, the fire continuing to come over here and uh, you know, down towards the Beartooth Highway. So. Gian Forte mentioned that it's an early start to fire season and he is preparing for the long haul. As these fires get bigger, uh, we need federal resources. I was very pleased on this Robertson Draw fire that we secured federal funding just yesterday. So the feds are going to be spent paying for 75% of the cost of that. That preserves our fire, fire suppression funds for additional fires that we might see later in the year. The community around Belfry, where the firefighter's base is located, has also been gathering funds. Right now on Facebook, we have a link that people have been sharing like crazy, and there's almost $4,000 in that account. Um, and then just like Venmo and PayPal and everything, probably about $1,000 there, so $5,000 total. And I'm not quite sure with all the supplies, but it's pretty incredible amount. Those donated funds have been used to buy supplies for the firefighters in the area. The supplies include water, Gatorade, granola bars, and more. They don't have to worry about loading their packs up and getting snacks and stuff like that. It's all right there when they come in to get dressed out, get their gear on, get on the truck and try to make it as easy as possible for them. So. Those involved with the donation say community support has been overwhelming. We're a close-knit community, but you know, when, when you see our land burning up like this, it hits us all at heart and it just people realize that, you know, how important our Montana Valley is. They also have a tab open at a Belfry restaurant so any firefighters can get a hot meal paid for by community donations. In Belfry, Brandon Warren, MTN News. Thanks, Brandon. In Billings, a local nonprofit has also helped firefighters battling the blaze. Family Service has assisted in making sure all officials and or rather fire firefighters have adequate supply of water, Gatorade, sodas and snack food. Well, also in Carbon County tonight, the Crooked Creek fire continues to burn in the Pryor Mountains. That blaze has charred at least 5,100 acres, and the FAA has now issued a temporary flight restriction over the area. That order allows firefighting aircraft to battle the flames. As of this hour, there have been no evacuations ordered, but a pre-evacuation warning remains in place for the Sage Creek area. A closure order also remains in effect for part of the Custer Gallatin National Forest and all Bureau of Land Management lands in the North Pryor Mountains. Now, those flames are burning along the Carbon and Bighorn County line. Well, over near Townsend, the Deep Creek Fire has burned nearly 4,600 acres, doubling in size since yesterday morning. The current cost of that blaze is estimated at around $1 million, and at least one home has been lost in the flames. Highway 12 has been reopened to traffic, but travelers should expect delays. Three new retail stores are coming to the Billings West End. They'll share the space of the former Big Bear Sports Center on King Avenue. Shaquille Cozart has details on the new, new developments. Big Bear Sports Center location here at 2618 King Avenue West has been vacant since November of 2017 after police held a standoff with an armed suspect who barricaded himself into the building. Five months later, owner Bob Taylor announced that the store would be closing due to damages to property. 
Now, it was just announced that an investment company has purchased the building and three new retail stores will be setting up shop. Those three stores include Sierra Trading Post, Home Goods, and Petco. The purchaser, Wood Investments Companies based out of California, announced Thursday that they purchased the 67,000 square foot and 5.19 acre property for $4.6 million. According to Wood Investments, the two TJX companies, Sierra Trading Post and Home Goods, will occupy 42,000 square feet of the facility. Petco has leased an additional 15,000 square feet, and Wood Investments themselves will occupy the remaining 10,000 square feet of the building. The almost three-year vacant Big Bear Sports Center building will be updated and revised over time to meet each of the new store's specifications. All three of the retail stores are expected to open in 2022. Reporting in Billings, I'm Shaquille Kozart with MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Shaq. Now this will be Wood Investments' first Montana property and the company's third acquisition in the Montana West region in the last three months. Well, MSU's Department of Native American Studies is recognizing several students for making a big difference in leadership and action in their communities. In tonight's Positively Montana story, MTN's Cody Boyer introduces us to a young woman from Browning who's actively working for more sustainable ways to feed her tribe. When it comes to making a difference, you can do that in many different ways. Some gardeners say making a difference is growing produce, tender, gentle care of a plant over a long period of time to produce a good and make that feed the community. That's what Danielle Antelope is doing, and she's all doing it for an area that she says needs it the most. The goal is to leave this community better than it was when I came into it. Most of the photos shared to me by MSU senior Danielle Antelope involve wheelbarrows filled with soil and truckloads of plants. It has really um, rooted from what my family has kept. Some families kept language, some families kept ceremony. My family kept plants. Even before she started majoring in sustainable food systems, Danielle's ambition started and remained in the Blackfeet Nation with their son Jace by her side. I wanted to answer these questions that I didn't have answers for so that my son um, doesn't have to ask the same questions that I'm asking. Danielle is the co-chair of Fast Blackfeet, a team of leaders that also helps run Oyop, the only need-based food pantry in Browning. Oyop means we are eating together. And she fit right in. It was just all of these people that were interested in the same thing and saw this nutrition education gap and the food security gap. Um, and wanted to solve it. In one year, that program became three, helping her people work towards a better food system and receive food education despite COVID-19. We wanted to know why people don't garden. What barriers do you have to gardening? And if you did garden, what would you garden? Including Danielle's own program, the Growing Health Tea Project. During COVID, you see all these Native people sharing what they're with their special blend of tea they're using. And it started to bring back traditional food waves. People started to think about how nutritious and how sustainable our, um, our traditional foods are. But if our food pantry participants can't afford to buy that um, $10 box of tea, then they're probably not drinking that tea. 11 families were chosen to plant and grow tea at their own homes, with Danielle among the gardeners, gloves on. We fundraise. $19,000. I call it a one big experiment and I make sure that my participants know that. Danielle earned the title of the Harriet Cushman Outstanding MSU Student on top of being a Newman Civic Fellow and recipient of the MSU Award of Excellence. Recognition that Danielle says isn't all hers. I get little signs here and there from, from my grandmas that have passed on that this is the work that they want me to be doing. Uh, um, Having that motivation and being able to celebrate my victories with my family um, makes it the most special. From her family roots to the roots her community is now planting. We're doing it for our community, and I think that's something to honor through our lives. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Great story. Thanks, Cody. Up next on tonight's MTN 530 News on Q2, a Billings High School senior is designing a new game plan before he heads to Annapolis to play football. Hi, everybody. Scott Breen at MSU Billings for the Yellow Jackets have a new athletic director straight ahead in sports. I'll tell you who he is and what's next.
And it'll look twice. The almanac looks so much like yesterday. Of course, no new rain and the temperature is very close to the same report we had about this time 24 hours ago. More on the forecast coming up.